Today, we are going to be testing for the presence of starch in leaves. For this experiment, we'll need a small pot filled with water. We'll need a leaf that has recently been exposed to the sun so that it's recently done photosynthesis. This one here I just ripped out from my garden. And we'll need some iodine solution that you can probably get anywhere. And of course, we'll need water. While I don't think the type of leaf matters, the one that I'm using has an obtuse shape, which can be uh, determined by the blunt tip. For the venation, it's pretty, I mean, in my opinion, I would say it's pinnate because it seems to sort of like spiral from this main bed in the middle. And then as for the actual um, uh, edges, I would say it's either denticulate or cerulate, which can be determined by these little, if you look really closely, you can kind of see these little jagged edges on the tip. For the experiment itself, the procedure goes as follows. Firstly, we obtain a leaf, which we've already done. We fill up the small pot with water and we heat it up. We put the leaf into the water and we let, it, we let it sit there and boil away. Now, obviously during the experiment, I will explain what the point of these steps are, but right now we're just gonna go over the procedure. So we put the leaf into the, wa the hot water and eventually the water will go green as the chlorophyll is boiled out and the leaf will become sort of frail and almost discolored. At that point, we can take the leaf out and then we add our iodine solution to the leaf and then we observe to see what happens. All right guys, so now we're gonna be heating up the water and I'm going to carefully put the leaf in there. That was not really good. So see, now what I like to do, because I've done this experiment multiple times, is I like to get a spoon, right? And I kind of just weigh it on the leaf. And I just let it, okay, that was, okay, that was, that was a fail, but I kind of let it, like I let it sit on the leaf. Okay, I'm struggling. Okay, then I let it sit on the leaf, that way the leaf is fully submerged, right? And then now we're just going to wait. All right, we're back with a quick update. We've got all of some uh, bubbles forming now. Um, I have a, a different glove on because the other glove is not very good at protecting me from the heat because this spoon is heating up. So quickly just get that leaf submerged. Okay, perfect. I'll update you guys again soon. Okay, we're back and now the water is uh, really getting hot right now. We can just barely see the leaf and as you guys can see, the water starting to go green. Now, normally, People boil their leaf in um, ethanol, usually in a, if I'm correct, a 95% concentration. Because it's much more effective than water. Because the reason why we boil the leaf is to get rid of the chlorophyll. And for those who uh, don't know, chlorophyll is basically that pigment, helps photosynthesis. It's all that plant biology stuff, right? Like our leaf is sort of uh, rising. Let's see, we're, that's why the water's going green, because we're boiling the chlorophyll out. And the reason why we boil the chlorophyll out is, well, number one, it kills the, the leaf, but secondly, we boil it out because the chlorophyll, being green, can interrupt the actual experiment because when we add iodine, um, a color change uh, occurs, symbolizing a chemical reaction, right? And obviously that green would mess up that chemical interaction, or sorry, reaction, right? Unfortunately, I do not have ethanol, so I'm using water, so my leaf is not gonna go completely white like it does in some other experiments. But regardless, uh, in my opinion, at least the outcome is still basically the same. I don't think ethanol is exactly required, but I guess if you want to get like a, like a flawless experiment, ethanol is probably the way to go. Okay, we're back. We finished boiling and now we have something that looks like green tea. I mean, I, I'm not gonna take a smell actually. Okay, that smells pretty good. Does it smell like green tea? I'm not sure. I actually don't know what green tea smells like. I'm thinking another whiff actually. Yeah, that's actually really nice. I do enjoy that smell. Hmm. Another reason to do it at home so you can smell it yourself. But now that we've finished boiling, I shall now extract the leaf. So the leaf has been successfully extracted, as you can see. And of course, for those following along at home, of course, wash away your pot because you don't want to get beat by your parents. So that's what I'm going to do right now. All right, so I'm back with our specimen and our iodine solution. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab this spoon again. Uh, okay, I have my spoon here. And I don't know about you guys, but I forgot what the leaf looked like when we started out. So here it is now, it's still pretty green. And when I flip it over, if I can flip it over. Oh my God, okay, flip it over. Okay, the veins are a lot more clear on the back side. So they're really pretty. So now for the moment you've all been waiting for, applying the iodine. So I'm gonna quickly grab this. And so quick tip about iodine. This stuff, it has a very strong smell. And once it gets on your fingers, it's very hard to take off. So iodine has a generally brown color, right? Okay, my cinematography is very bad right now. Sorry, I'm trying to like get the, sorry. It's pretty hard to do, but I'm applying it here little by little to the leaf. 
and unfortunately, it was at that moment that my camera died and I rushed to take pictures because the experiment was happening fast. So I'm sorry about that, the picture should be a picture on screen now. Now I'm gonna re-explain what I said during the video that unfortunately was not caught. So, for synthesis, the way it works is that you have carbon dioxide, you have water, and with it, you get glucose and oxygen. That's what plants are doing all the time, right? And so, this glucose, plants often store it in the form of starch. And so, the point of this experiment, as you can tell by the title, was to prove that starch is produced during photosynthesis. And we did prove it, we successfully proved it. And we did this with the iodine solution. You see, iodine has a chemical reaction with starch molecules, and this chemical reaction can be identified with a color change. So as you, could, as you noticed, iodine has a generally brown color, right? But when it interacts with starch, it changes into a dark blue or black color. In this case, we had the black color. And if you look at the leaf, you can see the black spreading all over because that leaf, it's full of starch because as you all know, the, leaves, the leaf is where the photosynthesis occurs, it's where the sunlight's hitting it. And you know what, that kind of summarizes the experiment. So uh, yeah, let me, if I made any mistakes, please let me know in the comments because I'm no scientist and uh, if you got any suggestions, let me know. That's it.